in the Mabinogi of Bronwen and Matholuch, there is a strange passage where the gigantic Bran the Crow is severely injured in the fighting, and Bran occupies the role of the great weather god of heaven. The wounded Bran realises that his wound is mortal, and so he orders his followers to cut off his head and to preserve it, and so to preserve stability. This episode follows the great war between Bran, the fresh water god of the heavens, the rain, the rivers, springs and fountains, and his followers of the island of the mighty, against Matholuch and his dark legions. The war was caused by the planned aggression of Nevnissian against Matholuch's the flood horses, which are the waves. This story has its ancient Chaldean parallel. Dug up from the ruined forgotten cities of ancient Babylon, Mesopotamia, are baked clay tablets which are inscribed in cuneiform with stories of the great god Bel Meradoch. In the versions of the seven tablets of the epic of creation, it is told how the mighty Bel Meradoch or Baal Marduk does battle with the evil forces of destruction and chaos. In this version of the tale, the powers of chaos are led by Apsu Rishtu and its awesomely powerful consort Tiamat, who together with Mamu, Mercury, the messenger of Apsu, plot the entire created universe of Ea, the created god. This trio wished to restore tranquility of the pre-creation nothingness. These are stories of the planets of our solar system in collision with intruding planets and gigantic errant comets. Some of these intruding planets and some of the existing planets were destroyed in these combats and collisions. These exploded or destroyed planets now circle endlessly around the sun in the form of millions of tons of asteroid debris. There are two major asteroid belts in our solar system, including our planet Earth. Here the All-Wise One is aware of the iniquity, and using his magic he attacks Apsu Rishta and Mamu Mercury with all his magical powers. Eird succeeds in killing Apsu Rishta, which means that an intruding planet into our solar system is probably destroyed. And Eird succeeds in binding and controlling Mamu, which means that Eird gets Mercury into a safe orbit. This gives time for the gods of the Babylon pantheon time to confer and to ask Ear to produce the mighty Bel Moradoch to oppose the enraged Tiamat, the consort of Apsu Rishtu. None of the gods are able to withstand Tiamat, and even Ear withdraws from her anger. So, Bel Moradoch is summoned into being as a son of Ear. And curiously, although a son or creation of Ear, Bel Moradoch is said to be born of Lakmu and Lakmu Apsu. In short, Bel Moradoch is brought into being in this context by Ea, and he arrives into our solar system from the vast, empty, still silences of quiet outer space. In this context, Bel Moradoch was identified as the planet Jupiter, or Niburu. So, Bel Moradoch is born in the Hall of Ea the primordial deep of the great waters of the firmament, where the heavens were conceived over a vast expanse of limitless oceans. Neither Ea nor any other god can combat the terrible female power of Tiamat. The sky god Anu is helpless, as is Ea, and all the powers of the day and night are helpless. Furious over the death of her consort, Apsu, and the binding of the messenger Mamu, the terrifying, awesome Tiamat raises a host of devils to fight with the gods. Foremost amongst these is Tiamat's brutish son, Kingu, and as they advance, the council of the gods is filled with dread. Significantly, Tiamat and Kingu are described as dragons, and therefore they appear as great comets or wandering planets with great trailing tails stretching dragon-like across the skies. The story tells how Kingu, who shared the desires of Tiamat, counselled her, saying, 
Apsu and Mamu have been overcome. We cannot repose. You will be their avenger, O tempestuous one. Tiamat heard the words of the bright and evil god, and answered, saying, O oh, my strength you can trust, so let the war be fought. And so the hosts of Chaos and the other great unknown were gathered together, and day and night they plotted and raged against the high gods, storming with fury as they prepared for battle, none of them taking any rest. So Tiamat, Mother Chuba, provided many terrible weapons, and exalted the monstrous Kingu, and delivered him to the tablets of fate. In the face of this enormous threat, the wise ear went to his father Ancho, and told him how Tiamat had turned against her own offspring. None of the gods could oppose Tiamat, and both Anno and Ia had to withdraw in fear. Then Anchar and the other gods exalted Belmoradoch, the son of Ia, and armed the fearless Belmoradoch with weapons to enable him to overcome the dragons Tiamat and Kingu. They gave him a magic garment which appeared and disappeared, giving invisibility at command, and also the invincible trident of lightning and thunderstone. Belmoradoch himself then created the seven winds of evil, of sandstorm, of uncontrollable typhoons, whirlwind, fourfold wind, sevenfold wind, and the wind with no equal. Then Belmoradoch rode out into battle to the great storm chariot, drawn by charging steeds with foam-flecked mouths, and he defeated Tiamat and all her dread legions. What we have is a parallel with the Mabinogi of Branwen, where three terrible red-haired strangers enter the realms of the Island of the Mighty, and these three are obviously Apsu Rishtu and Tiamat and their son Kingu. It means that the three intruder planets entered our solar system, threatening the existence of all the existing planets and everything on them. The Mabinogi relates how one of the three is killed, and the others are controlled if not killed. Amazing as it may seem, the debris of destroyed planets forming the outer asteroid belt of our solar system comprises of material which is predominantly red and is thought to be the remains of red planets. Bel Merodach then becomes the great weather god of heaven after this great victory over chaos. Reconstruction from fragments of tablets enables scholars to complete the story, and Bel Merodach offers to have his own head cut off so that humankind can be saved by his blood. His advisers counsel against this and recommend that Merodach should cut off the head of the captured Kingu, son of Tiamat, and this is done, and all life is saved. Barossus, the historian, writing around 300 BC, offers that the head of Bel Merodach was cut off to save life, and there are therefore some detailed contradictions or alternative versions of the story in later ages. These contradictions do not affect the theme of a great Chaldean Babylonian god being badly injured and offering his head to be cut off as a sacrifice to be the saviour of mankind, which is mirrored in the story of the great weatherstorm god Bran of Britain being voluntarily beheaded as a saviour, voluntarily sacrificed to save humankind. As Ea is undoubtedly one and the same as the Hebrew Yahweh, Jehovah, and Jesus, the alleged son of Yahweh, was also claimed to have been sacrificed as a saviour for mankind, the parallels are painfully obvious. The magic garment of invisibility given to Merodach parallels the cloak of invisibility given to Owain in the Countess of the Fountain Mabinogi. The fountain is of course the fountain of the waters of life, which is a constant theme in the ancient Chaldean tales and in the British Mabinogi stories, and the fountain is even depicted in murals on the walls of ancient Etruscan tombs. As has been proved, 
over and again. The ancient British and the ancient Etruscan alphabets are almost identical, and the preserved British ciphers allow for the decipherment and reading of their supposedly indecipherable Etruscan texts. This was identically published in AD 1793, 1846 and 1906 by competent Welsh authors and the matter was proved correct in 1984. The story of the Brand's beheading is told in the Mabinogi of Bronwen and Matholwch and the fountain appears in the Mabinogi of Manawodan and also in the Mabinogi of Owain and the Countess of the Fountain. After his great victory, Bel Moradach sets the whole of creation in order by organising the spiral of stars based on the circle of the zodiac and measuring the year into 365 days and grouping in the days into 12 months. He determined the limits of all the stars. He also founded the limit or orbit of the one star Nibiru, the planet Jupiter. Moradach set Ea the oceans and all the waters, and Enlil, the earth, in place on either side of himself, constructing the familiar Greek trilogy of Zeus, Poseidon and Pluto, or the Roman equivalents Jupiter, Neptune and Orcus, or the father, son and underworld ghost. Then he opened on each side of the heavens the mighty gates with fixing bolts right and left and placed the zenith in the centre. Polaris. This Chaldean Babylonian version mirrors the British Welsh set of doors in the dwelling of Bran. The opening of the forbidden door of the south in the Bronwen Mabinogi tale simply means that after eight years the heavens were again in disorder and the controlled procession of the planets and stars of day and night from east to west as seen from planet earth through the great gates was again disturbed. Stars and planets were no longer in all their appointed places and therefore the earth was in danger again, probably because Venus had moved into an erratic orbit, or less likely a shift in the earth's axis. The Babylonian Chaldean astronomers watched the planet Venus with unusual agitation and care for 80 years and their careful records have been rejected by modern astronomers. Either these ancient observers were totally clueless as to what they were doing for 80 years, or else the planet Venus indeed behaved erratically before again settling into a safe orbit. Significantly, in Egypt, the legends tell of a young Horus being hidden as a child, matching Jupiter and Bel Moradoch both being hidden as was Peridia, Welsh steel shirt, and after a great court battle with his uncle Seth, the judges took 80 years to decide on the division of earth and of heaven between the youth Horus and Seth. Then, with the conditions of the heavens, or at least of our solar system, finally stabilised, the judges were able to decide on the division of the heavens and earth between Horus and Seth. This solves the problems for Egyptologists who are puzzled as to why, after 80 years, the judges changed their decision and allotted almost all, all earthly regions of Seth in Egypt to Horus instead. The principle of as above so below applied and a changed stability in the heavens called for a change of boundaries on planet Earth. Eight years in Babylonia, eight years in Egypt, and eight years in ancient Britain. It's all too obvious. The problem is, and will be, academic intransigence and a refusal to move forward from outdated theories which do not match with the ancient evidence. To cap it all, the ancient English legend of Beowulf is an almost exact replica of the Belmoradach and Tiamat saga. Beowulf kills Grendel, a monster son of the monster Tiamat, and then Beowulf fights and slays the even more monstrous mother. 
to kill the terrible demon mother monster. Beowulf dives into the oceans and stays underwater for a very long period, and this must mean that these so-called oceans are the vast, empty reaches of outer space. Once Beowulf is seen as the alter ego of Bel Merodach, Jupiter, and Grendel is either Apsu Rishu or Kingu, the parallels between these ancient stories become obvious. It does not matter if the Beowulf saga we have today was written down 1300 years ago or 1000 years ago or whatever. In Britain's damp climate and after millennia of wars, invasions, firestorms and even bookworms, the stories are inevitably of huge antiquity. Everything descends to us from the two great inward migrations in antiquity from Syrian Chaldea around 1600 BC and from Verticoma's Trojan Asia Minor around 504 BC. By rejecting the national historical heritage, the confidence tricksters and forgers of 19th century Oxford, Cambridge and London came close to fooling all the people all the time and it almost proved Abraham Lincoln wrong. This would have impoverished everyone. Some great stuff there from Wilson and Blackett and there is loads more from them about ancient times, births, religions, why pyramids there, all sorts of stuff in the unpublished works which we're transferring into books as rapidly as possible. It's also a live show every Sunday evening at 8pm, try and get a video up every day at 8 o'clock about something or other and you can follow the Britain's Hidden History Project as we explore the sites going up hills, down caves, checking out mysterious ancient stones like this lion stone staring out. Ah, uh, <laughs> what's it looking at exactly? And they've got ancient megalithic walls. People travel around the world for them. We've got them in Wales and the councils are taking them down. Really, what can you do? It's madness. We also look at uh, hidden history of other countries, most notably America, doing some stuff on New Zealand and it's not just about Wales okay it's England Scotland Ireland all there and there is so much history we're just not taught about anymore but it's not lost yet it's not deleted yet it's not destroyed yet it's just hidden and we can find it and reveal it and share it till next time here they were.